Thank you to everyone for joining us on this very special day for Oregon State University and Beaver Athletics. Before the press conference begins, we have a video we'd like to share. We've been at this a long time, 128 years to be exact. Competing, yes, but also learning, growing, serving, fighting, becoming a family, coming together as a community in this special place where we enter as strangers and leave as friends. We've laughed here, cried here, been welcomed here, celebrated here, graduated here. The home of Beaver football and so much more. It's home to the Oregon State spirit. The pulse of Beaver Nation emanates from these walls, off these seats, echoing from outreached rooftops to impact the state and the globe. It began in the dirt and dust of Bell Field, leather helmets and rugby scrums. First on a field, then in a bowl, then in a stadium ever expanding to meet the needs of a community that thrives on togetherness. The home of legends, Rose Bowl champions turned heroes. Belfield could not contain our ambition. So we do what beavers always do. We built. From Parker to Reeser and at every step in between, additions, renovations, enhancements to ensure the home of Beaver Nation matches the heart of Beaver Nation in quality and passion. We've come a long way over the last 128 years. Now, it's time to finish what we started. At this time, we'll turn it over to Oregon State President F. King Alexander to get us started. Good morning and welcome. It's a great day to be a beaver. With great excitement, it is my pleasure to announce a historic $50 million anonymous lead gift to help fully transform Research Stadium's west side. In addition to supporting our football team and all of OSU athletics, the completion of the Research Stadium project will have significant impact on our entire university, including all students, faculty, and staff. Imagine cheering for our football team on the victory in one of the nation's most modern stadiums. I can't thank this donor enough for the remarkably generous gift and support of Oregon State University throughout the years. This historic lead gift to completing Research Stadium equals the largest donation ever given to Oregon State University. I'm also very pleased to announce another $10.5 million anonymous gift that has also been made to completing to the completing research stadium project. And we're not done there. Other major gifts are anticipated soon. These lead gifts represent a significant and give us significant momentum towards the $85 million fundraising goal for which will be an overall $153 million stadium project. Thanks to many, private fund fundraising continues to transform Beaver Athletics as well as all of Oregon State University. When completed, this new West Side of Research Stadium will provide a university facility that will improve the, the OSU fan experience at games and advance our competitiveness in the Pac-12 conference. A completed Research Stadium will represent much more than that. Starting in the fall of 2003, a modernized stadium will give the university a 365 day a year campus facility 
that will also provide a new health and emergency care center for our Corvallis community students, as well as other OSU community members. A new state-of-the-art interactive welcome center for new and prospective students and family of, uh, families of which we are hoping to ensure that we are keeping the best and brightest that come from Oregon and going out and getting the best and brightest from other states and bringing them to Corvallis and to the state of Oregon. This center will also support efforts to keep our best and brightest here by also providing space for faculty, staff, and students in a conference center that will also be part of the West Side Stadium. This project could not have been achieved without incredible collaboration. I thank OSU President Emeritus Ed Ray for his leadership, his vision and support in launching plans to complete the Research Stadium project three years ago. I salute the OSU Foundation President and CEO Sean Scoville and the OSU Foundation team for securing these significant gifts. And I congratulate and thank Scott Barnes for his vision and tireless project leadership in this important endeavor. And again, I thank all of our OSU donors. Beaver Nation definitely benefits from a strong collaboration with its foundation, its alumni association and athletics and its board of trustees. So we are grateful to all of the volunteers and to all of our donors. All of these individuals and enterprises continue to play key roles in advancing this project that became a national showcase and place of pride for Beaver Nation for generations to come. And with Coach Smith, Scott Barnes and others, I look forward to advancing this project in the months ahead and look forward to celebrating when we cut the ribbon for this new West Side project, as well as the new facilities that will benefit all of our students at Oregon State University. Thank you. Thank you, President Alexander. Uh, that video you all saw, um, I will admit to you now, and my staff witnessed it, the first time I saw it, I didn't just get goosebumps, I, I cried. And, and the second time I saw it, I cried, but I've, I've composed myself. I think about the rich history that this place has enjoyed and uh, it, it, it is moving. Um, I also think about recent history and I think about a conversation I had with Coach Smith three years ago. In fact, it was just above where we're sitting in the Valley Football Center in his office, corner office with great views to the field. And it was only a few weeks into his uh, tenure here as head coach. And I, I had him come up the window and I pointed to the west side and I said, we're gonna get this done. And at that point, we didn't know each other very well. He might've thought I was a dreamer more than, uh, more than anything. <laughs> Fast forward three years and that dream has become a reality for all of us. And it is a, indeed a wonderful day for Oregon State University and Beaver Athletics um, as we think about uh, where we sit. And I can say emphatically that we would not be here where we are today without the incredible generosity of our anonymous lead donors. Uh, and, and what's been so gratifying about this project is, is the generosity without question, but the incredible enthusiasm our donors have had in support of this project. It, it has been a fun process. As we think about where we sit five, fundraising wise, um, currently as, as uh, President Alexander said, our goal is 85 million uh, total in philanthropic gifts. We're at 64.5 million, but closer to 70 million when you think about the uh, verbal commitments that we have great confidence in. A lot of work still to be done, um, and yet a day to celebrate uh, the launch of, of completing uh, this uh, fantastic project. When we think about foundational goals for this project, and President Alexander spoke eloquently about year-round use. Um, and, and that was a, a, a foundational goal that we had. And I think we've uh, hit the mark in many ways in that regard. And it, it makes me think a little bit about um, athletics role in a university generally um, in advancing the mission of the university. You know, I think of us as the front porch. We're not the most important room in the house, but we are the most visible. With that visibility comes incredible responsibility uh, for our student athletes, coaches and staff to represent us with integrity and honor and comes also great opportunity, opportunity to introduce our great university 
to folks in this community, this region, this state, and nationally. And this project only exemplifies the opportunity to do that and magnifies the opportunity that over 83% of donors who give to athletics give to other parts of the university. And so this is uh, indeed a collaborative effort, an opportunity to um, advance uh, the mission of our university. Really excited about a couple other foundational goals. One is the fan experience. Uh, off the charts, as, as we think about what will happen um, in uh, improved concessions and in, in circulation, a 360 degree concourse was one of our primary goals here. And uh, we like to effectually refer to the connecting point of that as Beaver Street. Beaver Street, as you think about some of the favorite streetscapes you may have enjoyed, the activity and vibrance of those streetscapes, uh, that's what we'll bring to Beaver Street. Unique food and beverage choices for all to enjoy all around the stadium. And that is, that is a advanced uh, piece that we haven't had in Reesha before. So very excited about what this does for the fan experience. This project also creates a revenue stream that stabilizes and will grow over time our athletic department uh, finances. And so becomes even more critical today um, than, it, than it was uh, just uh, a year ago. Um, also, I would add, uh, obviously, uh, this project will enhance the recruitment of our student athletes and our general students, as well as raise the level uh, of our ability to be successful both in the Pac-12 and nationally with our football program. I know Jonathan will speak more specifically to that. So let me pass the baton over to Coach Smith. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Well, exciting day without question for our football program, but Oregon State University and every Beaver out there uh, across this great state. Um, I want to start by thanking really these two men I'm sitting next to. Uh, Scott's correct. When I first got down here and we're sitting in my office and he began to talk about what, uh, what he visioned for Research Stadium and what could be done. Um, can't thank him enough for his vision, leadership. Uh, I was not in every meeting across this campus over the last few years, but to get a little bit of the landscape and the leadership and work amongst so many to get us to this point, it makes me proud to be a Beaver. Uh, I appreciate President Alexander and making this a priority because again, the vision of it definitely helps this football program, this athletic department, but in so many ways helps this university. Makes me be uh, proud to be an alum. Uh, I wanna thank Beaver Nation. Uh, generosity continues, the support continues. I wanna thank our fans. Cannot wait to get them back down into Reacher Stadium <laughs> next year. Uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be something special. And then obviously as this uh, project comes to completion, that'll be special to have our fans back uh, in Reacher Stadium. You know, as the football coach, this shows a continued investment in football. And there's no question that this project's gonna help this football program in recruiting, in maintaining and gaining on the momentum we've been able to uh, create. Uh, a lot of recruitment's on uh, Saturdays in the fall when we got parents and potential recruits coming to the place uh, and the energy that this will continue to create in Re Research Stadium benefits us. Uh, uh, facilities in recruitment uh, matter. And so this benefits uh, the football program in a huge way. But at the same time, I wanna take us back again to this vision that this was not only for football. This was not only for the athletic department. And, and hearing the meetings and the conversations that went throughout these last few years, I'm proud to say I'm an alum of this place. I'm proud to say that I did walk the halls and on campus and lived in Callahan dorm because this has truly been a group effort of this university. And so, it needed alignment from a lot of places with great leadership. We've gotten to this point and I couldn't be more proud to be an alum of Oregon State University. Go Beavs. We'll open it up now for questions. Please use the raise your hand feature on, Zip, on Zoom and say who your question is for. You'll be unmuted when it's your turn to ask a question. We'll start with Nick Daschle. Well, questions about the uh, donor. Um, why, why does the donor wanna remain anonymous? So that's a donor prerogative. Uh, they have their reasons for that and, and we'll respect that, Nick. Uh, 
all of our efforts in fundraising are donor centered uh, re regarding the project and their wishes. So that that is simply their wish. Our next question, Andrew Hobner. Yeah, pre uh, President Alexander, um, what else within the renovation, if anything, will be involved um, for for students on campus as, as a resource um, for the non athletics portion uh, of the campus at, at Oregon State? So the, the nice oh. nice part about this renovation is it does turn the facility into a 365 day a year instead of a seven or eight, including graduation uh, uh, event center. Um, the new health and emergency a public private partnership that we're working to complete a new health and emergency care center uh, for our Corvallis campus students, as well as other Oregon State University faculty and staff. Um, this would be this would open hours up longer. It'd be more easily accessible to students who need health and, and emergency care, as we found in this pandemic is something is very, very important, as well as a, an interactive student welcome center. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to bring our students together, the, the potential students that are coming to us from Oregon, but also from other states that we could pull their families in and very interactive high tech welcome center that kicks off their tours of campus uh, that can be used for multiple other purposes as well. In addition to that, there'll be a, a center area that has open for conference use that would be used by our faculty, our staff, departmental meetings, uh, college meetings, as well as alumni events uh, that could go on year round. So it really opens up the west side of the stadium to be a fully functional 365 day a year facility that helps us recruit our students and keep our students. So we're very excited about turning the stadium in from an eight day a year facility to one that we can use throughout the year. Our next question from John Warren. Next question from Angie Machado. As Scott, well, the, um, I have two quick ones. Will the name of the stadium remain Research Stadium? Yes, it will. Okay, and, and Coach Smith has, um, what was the team's reaction when they saw the video? You know, we haven't been able to gather to show them that. I know these guys are very aware of uh, what's taking place, um, and they're excited about it. Uh, but even watching them walk through these halls, they're back to work, man. They're getting some work done in the weight room right now. John, do you still have a question? John Warren? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, this is for Scott. Just a question on the timeline from breaking ground to completion. Do you have it yet? Yeah, yes, we do, John. Thanks for the question. So we, we actually will turn the page from schematic design to design development uh, in the next week or two, uh, move into construction documents at the end of the 2021 football season, literally the day after, we will go into demolition mode, uh, knock the west side down uh, to, the, to the foundation and begin construction. Um, 2022, the season will be a bit tricky as we uh, have to accommodate uh, for construction while we're playing in the stadium. Fast forward to 23, uh, we will be wrapped up in, in uh, summer by the end of June of 23 and have a couple months to, to break the new facility in before we uh, start the 23 season. Our next question is from News Channel KTVZ for President Alexander and Scott. How closely will the changes to the west side mirror the existing stadium? Yeah, um, you know, this project will actually bring uh, some good balance in terms of uh, uh, the, the aesthetic uh, uh, value of, of both sides. So the west side currently uh, is, a bit, is a bit smaller. This will bring more balance. So it'll be, it'll be, uh, It'll mirror uh, in size uh, a bit more the east side. It'll contain uh, 644 premium seating areas meticulously planned through our uh, uh, donor and, and uh, fan base uh, market survey. Um, it will have a split deck. So unlike the current west side, uh, it will have a split dunk, uh, deck, excuse me, houses media, um, uh, general seating, uh, premium seating, 
and then what we what we've mentioned as as Beaver Street and a concourse sitting below that as well. So all in all, uh, this will bring some nice balance uh, to Reeser Stadium. And, and I'd like to add also something that most people don't fully understand is that it also eliminates seventy million dollars in deferred maintenance for the university. That's about fifteen percent of the university's deferred maintenance. So as, as the West side gets older, it, it gains every year in the, the amount of deferred maintenance that we need to tackle, which also gives us the opportunity to do the seismic upgrades that we need to do on the West side. So this helps us in so many ways, helps us do all of these things from deferred maintenance, reducing the deferred maintenance and, and the growing deferred maintenance that our university has each and every year, but also the seismic upgrades that we know we need to do on the West side. We'll go back to Nick for another question. Yeah, Scott, I, you mentioned that the stadium is going to uh, remain uh, named Research Stadium, but is there a, a stadium ra naming rights option for this donor at a later date? We have uh, Research Stadium will, will remain Research Stadium. Um, we do have um, naming opportunities throughout the new facility that we'll take advantage of both from a donor perspective and a corporate sponsor perspective, and that'll uh, that has not been poured into the revenues we're, we're uh, calculating, but an, an added opportunity. So as an example, Nick, uh, entry areas, uh, concourses, clubs uh, would have the uh, opportunity for either corporate or donor naming rights. As well as the Welcome Center and the Conference Center that'll be downstairs. So they'll, they'll be wide open for, for potential donor namings. Okay, we'll go back to Andrew. Uh, Scott, the, the athletic department is still running a, a deficit, and I'm curious if the financials that you guys have seen on this renovation are, are enough to justify long term something where it, it can get you guys back closer toward the black, um, as opposed to wh where you guys are now. Yeah, Andrew, thank you for the question. You know, one of one of the uh, foundational goals of this project was uh, revenue generation. We we believe this project. Uh, moves us to financial sustainability and, and overall uh, growth in the future. Uh, the reason for that, there's really two forces working in our favor. One is um, the, the extreme leverage that 85 million in philanthropic gifts provides to bring down that debt service. Secondly, is a myriad of new revenue streams that'll be uh, created uh, from the premium seat uh, offerings. Both those uh, not only pay for the project, but also carry forward uh, um, uh, the, the COVID challenges we've had this year and uh, will we'll assist in, in general operations for athletics moving forward. We have another question from John Warren. This for uh, President Alexander, uh, two quick questions. One, did you, just to confirm, did you say it was the largest ever donation to the school or at least, uh, at least athletics? And the other is, uh, is the the medical facilities built into the stadium? Will there need to be any game day facilities changes to accommodate both the day by day workings of the facility and then football games? We don't think so, but th those logistics are we'll, we're going to work them out as we go because those are that we understand traffic is going to be very different on game day, certainly around the facility. But we'll do everything possible to keep our facility open and to make it accessible to our students. Uh, and others in the, in the OSU community. It is the largest athletic gift. It's not the, it's tied for the largest university gift with the Carlson gift of the School of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, that was another $50 million gift. And we recently received a $25 million anonymous gift that is going to the art, arts and education complex that will also begin construction a little before we begin construction on RESER. So we appreciate the work that our donors have done and we appreciate their their support of, of what we're doing academically as well as as well as athletically. We have a question from Kate Rogerson. This one's for coach. Um, in a year that's been so strange, six months ago, your football season got postponed, then it happened. What is it like to see the blueprints and kind of see all of this come together? Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, you're just appreciative to be sitting in this seat, being the head football coach in the direction and belief that we're, uh, that we're headed toward. Um, I have seen these renderings. I was kind of making fun of things last night because I'm talking about, well, I love coaching, but when I'm done coaching, I'm coming to these games to be able to sit in this state, uh, stadium and enjoy it. Uh, back to Nick Daschle. 
Scott, there's been some at the faculty Senate meeting and there's been some documents that came out recently that the, there's about a $35 million deficit from this year. Uh, do you guys plan to borrow that money somehow with this project? Uh, that That is uh, correct. We are projecting because of revenue shortfalls, Nick, that $35 million. And, and what is uh, really, again, exciting and, and sort of uh, foundational this project is that not only uh, do we generate uh, a little over $5 million in net annualized revenue that covers the cost of the facility, but also uh, picks up that $35 million deficit uh, over time. And so um, we have not determined whether what vehicle we'll use in terms of financing, I think was your question, whether it be the PAC-12 financing or our own, but I did want to uh, underscore the fact that uh, revenues generated from this project will cover that. Back to Andrew for another question. Yeah, this is for President Alexander. There's a there's a school of thought out there that uh, the arms race in college football is is becoming a little bit too much, and uh, the optics of doing something like this during a time of COVID, when when a lot of universities and institutions are cutting things on the academic side, what would you say? Uh, to the critique or criticism of putting this money into this stadium project now at this particular point with everything that's happened in the last year? Well, this is not a time to stop moving forward and looking forward. We've been, we've been planning this for three years. Uh, this is an important time to make sure that our student enrollments are going to be coming and showing up and and this, is a, this isn't simply a football issue. This is about recruitment of students that all over the country and keeping our Oregonian students here. This is about giving them the, a comprehensive student experience. This is about giving 350 marching band members an opportunity to participate in a complete college experience. This is about re-engaging and engaging our alumni in sporting events that bring them back to campus that lead to gifts like this. Many of our academic gifts wouldn't happen if we weren't succeeding in both. So I don't see this as a bifurcated or dichotomous uh, enterprise. I see this, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it well. And football, just like our laboratories, we compete with UCLA in our laboratories and our research for our faculty, for research dollars in Washington, DC, as well as on the playing fields and the courts. So I don't see this as being an either or. And yes, we're in COVID, but we wanna come out of this stronger with great momentum as a university. And we certainly, with 75% of our funding coming from our students, we want to give our students the best possible experience they can have, which includes having an intercollegiate athletic program that competes with the best. And that's in the classroom and on the courts. Back to Nick Daschle. Scott, a couple of timeline questions. Do you have a timeline on fulfilling the remaining 20, I think it's 20.5 million in, in donor gifts? Tomorrow would be a good time to do that, Nick. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we uh, a couple couple thoughts on that. Um, one is is uh, we're hopeful that we can complete the 85 million with 20 gifts or less. Uh, we have been in conversation with most all of uh, uh, the prospective donors, and we'll be circling back. Uh, King and I will be uh, to to close those gifts as soon as possible. Um, can't. Uh, forecast exactly when that'll be, but uh, soon. And, and I would like to think that by midsummer uh, of this year, we're in, in a much better place and close to or at the goal. Another question from Andrew. Yeah, this is for Jonathan. Uh, looking at what recruiting has been across college football and, and in a way, yes, it, you know, facilities matter, stadium experience matters. Um, to recruits and, and to your guys when they come into play on Saturday, what does this do for you to be able to go out and, and sell these renderings and then in a couple of years be able to actually sell the stadium itself as an additional thing to pitch to recruits as a reason to come to Oregon State? Yeah, it's a huge help. It does a lot. You know, again, it shows the continuing investment, shows kind of where we're headed as we're always working to improve. Uh, anytime you become the best of the best in regards to the state of the art stadium, not only for the student athlete themselves, but we recruit families and they're going to come experience Saturdays uh, in the fall this way. And so uh, this is game changing and it's something we will not uh, in any way sell short as this recruiting process continues over the next couple of years. Go back to Nick. 
this is either for Scott or Dr. Alexander. Um, in regard to the uh, private partner for the uh, student medical facility, is there a timeline on that as far as finding somebody and announcing that, or do you is it necessary to have a private partner for this? Actually, we are right now in negotiation with a, with one of those private partners that we we hope to, that comes to fruition. We don't know exactly when the details will get worked out, but as soon as they get worked out, we'll certainly uh, announce it. And uh, having a private partner does help. It helps us in uh, financially. We've got a very out it's an outdated student health center right now. They do a great job, but it's an old facility. So a private partner allows us to upgrade in equipment, allows us to upgrade in, in, in the, the type of, of laboratories as, as well as in medical examination areas that we might not be able to do without a private partner. So that's why we're exploring these possibilities right now. Do we have any further questions from anyone? Thank you everybody for joining us. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. Go Beavs.